What's up guys, we are back with another review, and this one is definitely off the beaten path for me, but I have been seriously interested in this figure for a while now. It's not exactly new, it's new-ish, but I'm going to take a look at it anyway. We are talking about the Mezco 112 Collective Wolverine, the Tiger Stripe Wolverine, and I have one other Marvel 112 Collective. I have a cable that I was going to one day turn into a blue Craig, and I never, I never did. I mostly stick to the Rumble Society stuff. But I'm really excited about this guy because it definitely seems like they're going for like a ultimate, you know, a Wolverine you're never going to replace. There's just so much stuff in here. And I got this from a new place, too. I got it from the folks over at Frogman's Finds. I'll put a link down below if you want to check them out. They're a new online shop. Uh, they carry Mezco and all the normal stuff you'd expect. But the one thing they have a little different is that they do like a punch card system. So you, you buy 10 figures, you're going to get something free which is definitely not the norm. So you might want to swing by and check them out. Uh, again, I'll put a link down below to them and their socials as well if you want to follow them. But our Mezco 112 Collective Wolverine also comes in a really weird box. So it's not uncommon for Mezco to put stuff in a metal tin, but this isn't a lunchbox. It's just a metal tin. It's a, it's a big one too. I'm assuming this might contribute to the slightly elevated price on this figure, but again, there's a ton of stuff in here. So we've got, again, a metal tin. So you can't see in it. The figure's in there, but you can't see it. So you've got some classic artwork of Wolverine there on the front, and then you've got the X-Men logo, and then you've got more artwork of Wolverine on the back, and then you've also got different artwork of him on the top and the bottom, and you get our blue and black X logo to complement our very yellow metal tint. So I like this kind of packaging. I don't know that I necessarily need it. I mean, a lot of my Mezcos just come in kind of like a cardboard shoebox, but it is cool. Presentation is pretty wild, but let's do it. Let's pull them out and take a look. And here we go, out of the package, our Mezco 112 Collective Tiger Stripe Wolverine. A figure that's had my attention for quite a while now because, well, mostly because there's like a million and one accessories in this box. And they're just trying to, to make it seem like this is the ultimate Wolverine, the last one you'll probably need to buy. And while, of course, you know, we're going to get a million more Wolverines from now until the end of action figures, this guy does seem like a pretty ultimate Wolverine at first glance. So let's just jump right into it, see what this guy can do, see how he moves around. It still feels like a pretty normal Mezco figure. I don't really see that there's anything exactly unique about this figure. And I know I've never reviewed, I don't think I've ever reviewed a Marvel Mezco because I don't really have any. Uh, but it, it's pretty normal. Like, there's there's no surprises here, I don't think. So to start, head looks up really, really good. He looks down really nicely also. Really nice tilt side to side. Full rotation, of course. Arms out at the shoulders. They rotate. The shoulder pad goes with it, as you saw. We've got a slight butterfly joint. You've got your bicep swivel. We've got double jointed elbows. They're not the greatest, but they're still pretty good. That's like, you know, that's bad. It's way better than 90. We've got ball hinges for the wrist. So, you know, up and down, and then you can swivel them any way you want. Of course, you got rotation. We've got our crunch. He goes backwards about that far. He goes forwards really nicely too. Like that's a nice solid crunch. My only real concern with this is that over time, the stripes, which of course are, you know, glued on to the suit, I believe, might suffer from that. This is also a twist point up here. It's a it's a diaphragm cut. So, you know, tilt side to side, rotation. You can't get him all the way around because of, you know, the pajamas he's wearing, but it works pretty well. And then you've got a little shimmy down there at the waist also. So you can get him to turn really far. I mean, he does move quite nicely. You're going to have to deal with some wrinkles when you do that, but I think he works pretty nicely. Legs do seem a little bit limited, and that's mostly because of the underoos, I think. So legs go out about that far, which is still pretty good. They go far, uh, forward about, about that far, not fully 90, but you can fudge it. And then they go backwards slightly. You've got a little bit of a thigh twist up there. Of course, you got to work around the PJs again. Knees, they don't go all the way back, but they still have pretty decent range on them. And then you've got your ankles down here, which in typical Mezco fashion aren't the greatest. This is like one of the areas where I always kind of gripe when it comes to Mezco articulation because they're just balls. So you have a slight rocker, like almost non-existent rocker and very, very little hinge, but you do have some twists down there too. So you get a little movement. Uh, that's that's like the one area that, I mean, I kind of expected it to be like that. I, I wish it wasn't, but I'm not really surprised that it is either. Otherwise though, I mean, he, he moves really, really well and the suit allows him to move uh, pretty well also. It doesn't restrict him nearly as much as I expected. It does a little bit, uh, but not too bad. Now, aesthetically, this is, this is definitely the, the area where this is a little bit of a different kind of figure for me because I really don't buy the licensed side of Mezco stuff. I stick to Rumble Society pretty much through and through. I have a couple, you know, I've got Conan, I've got Space Ghost, I've got Judge Dredd, but I don't really get into the Marvel or the DC side of Mezco because I'm a Legends guy. But 
this is a pretty damn good looking Wolverine. Like, I think they really, really did a solid job here of making him a very classic and, you know, kind of universal Wolverine while not Mezcoifying him up. You know, a lot of the Mezco, Marvel, and DC stuff, they do their own spin on it. It's still obviously that character, but they do their own thing. And that's one of the reasons why, you know, historically, I just don't get into them because I'd prefer their actual comic look. This is close enough for me. I think it's really good. Uh, the yellows are super bright and vibrant. The blues are incredibly saturated. They still have a little bit of a Mezcoification to them like the shoulder pads do. Uh, definitely the shoulder pads are the areas that kind of jump out at me. This, of course, is, is striving to look for, you know, like first appearance Wolverine because of that particular head that we've got. This isn't exactly first appearance though because he's got a red belt which is included in the box, but this is how he comes. So uh, you've got a, a black belt on him here which I do think looks really nice. The tiger stripes are really clean and crisp. I will say on the back, they look a little bit wonky, but they're pretty close. Like they're definitely not even across the board, but it's the back, I'm not too worried about it. The front on the belly looks really good and on the shoulders looks really nice. He's got hair that runs up and down the arms, which it's okay. I mean, it's obviously just little, little paint marks or tampo work, but it looks good. And it's better than having bare arms too. Uh, the undies look good. I am, kind of, I am going to be concerned over time of how this material is gonna fare. I've never had a Mezco like, you know, do any kind of deterioration type of situation with me. I know some folks have seen that uh, with other, you know, pleatherish kind of material. I've not encountered that, so I'm hoping that it doesn't happen, but uh, these look good. They sit really well. I mean, they, they frame the crotch, as weird as it is to say that, uh, very nicely. You can see a little bit of the leg musculature through the spandex, which I think looks really nice. And then you've got your boots, which are, they're a little Mezcoified, but they do look pretty nice. And they are, they're clearly Wolverine boots. And that's kind of what I like. They, they did do their own little thing on this one, just a little bit, but it's in a very, very minor way. You know, a lot of the figures, they, they go, they go a little too far for my taste sometimes. Uh, but this one, this screams Wolverine to me, uh, in just about every every way and i really really like this head sculpt and you know heads are going to be a thing we'll be talking about with this release because he's got 500 of them in this box but i've always loved the original wolverine head and this this looks fantastic the black is incredibly saturated against that bright bright yellow you've got uh, like kind of a stoic but you know it's wolverine so he's a little angry too you've got a little bit of an angry expression there you slightly furrowed brow the whole kind of deal and then you've got you know your little your little ears on the top, which are our classic Wolverine, and then you know very much the lines around the mouth piece also. This these heads are a little bit Mezcoified also, but not in a way that it really uh, you know is to the figure's detriment. I think they do a pretty solid job of capturing Wolverine's uh, you know intensity and his likeness, especially when they do unhelmeted or unmasked heads. And, and this is a really really solid figure. He feels great. I love the suit. I do like the fact that we have, you know, bare arms on a Mezco figure. You know, you don't get that kind of stuff all the time. But I, when they do, you know, unclothed parts on figures, I think they do a really solid job to it. Looks good. Fits the figure nicely. And again, it's not Mezcoified enough to, to take me out of it. But it, it just it has just enough of their touch to make me, you know, appreciate their little changes while still very much knowing that this is absolutely Wolverine. Now, we probably should do some size comparisons here also because, well, he's a little bit different. And... I don't know how well he's going to scale with a lot of stuff because he's a little bit bigger than I thought he was going to be, especially in comparison to our Hasbro Wolverine. So we've got, you know, the original first appearance Wolverine. We've got our uh, Apocalypse Wave, right? Tiger Stripe Wolverine. They're the same figure, but just to showcase both of them, you can see that our Mezco is bulkier in just about every regard, and he's taller. Probably not the biggest deal. I guess still, he'll still probably work just fine. And for me, you know, he's basically going to be like a one-off anyway. Uh, so it's not really a big deal. But here he is next to the new, you know, standard body size. So he's definitely, especially if you're going to mix him into Hasbro stuff, he is definitely too tall to be mixed in with someone like Vulcan here. And then let's do a Mezco figure because, of course, we, we need to do that. So here's Conan. And he's basically the same size as Conan. And then let's do... Let's do uh, something bigger. So how about a Mythic Legions figure? So of course he's he's a little bit dwarfed by Baron Volagar here. So I do think he is slightly big. He'll probably work okay within the confines of Mezco. I don't really know about spreading him across other lines because he definitely looks big compared to the Hasbro stuff. But I think he'll be okay, especially if he's a one-off. Like for me, I'm probably not going to have him for anything but himself. But you might have to fudge uh, that scale a little bit depending on what you're going to put him into. Now, accessories is where this set really gets crazy because, like I mentioned, he comes with just so, so much. And the name of the game is changing up appearance, changing up eras, changing up styles of Wolverine. So, to start with, 
we do get some extra hands. He comes with fists on him in the box, and then you get a set of style pose open hands, and you get another set that has a left gripping style hand and a right finger pointing hand. But then of course we get a bunch of claws, and I'm really happy with the way they did claws. They're not removable, they're not falling out, they're not going all over the place. We get different hands for different styles of claws. So to start with, we get fist hands with the adamantium claws. We also get style pose, you know, splayed finger hands with adamantium claws, and we get bone claws with fists. So you've got different styles, again, different eras of Wolverine. These are my favorite though, just because they're different. To get the splayed fingers and the claws, it's not something that I think I have any figures of now. Well, I do now, I suppose, but that's really cool. I'm really happy with that. We get a couple other ways to change them up, and we'll get to heads here in a second. Like I mentioned, the belts are removable. So we have the black one on him here, but you've got a red one. So this is more first appearance style. And you've also got a different belt buckle with the X in the, in the rectangle that goes onto this belt. So you can pop this one off, and then you can put that new uh, belt buckle on. Now, where the set truly gets crazy, and I mean, I can't stress this enough, is heads. As you can see, we've got a more iconic Wolverine tiger stripe head on him here with the big mask, with the big fins, and he looks fantastic, and I'm really happy with that. But he starts with the first appearance suit. So you get that head with the stoic, slightly grumpy expression. And we also get a head that has gritting of the teeth with that. So he has two alternate head sculpts for the first appearance look. Then we get some unmasked heads. So you get a, again, stoic but grumpy Logan, and then you also get a even grumpier Logan. And you don't want to mess with him, and I really, really like this one. There's a lot of character here. This is a very Mezcoified sculpt, but it's obviously Logan. So that one's really cool. And you also get the mask down around his neck. So you can put that down and use that in conjunction with the, you know, the, just the standard unmasked head sculpts. However, these heads are where it truly gets crazy because we get four of them. So you have the, again, stoic but slightly grumpy Wolverine with the iconic big fins. And I love this head sculpt. I think it's fantastic. We get a gritting of the teeth, so he's even angrier. Then we get a yelling head, so he's even angrier after that. And then we get the basically drunk on battle, you know, berserker style of head sculpt, where he is just beaten all to hell. And I absolutely love this head sculpt. So he's got kind of like a maniacal smile going on, tons of battle damage. So even like one of the fins is broken, claw marks all through his skull. You can see his adamantium skull peeking through. His face is all torn to shreds. And again, just a ton, a ton of detail there. And I absolutely love it. I think it's fantastic. It's just another way to make this figure that already looks really good, even more expressive and unique. And then to add on to that, we get a bunch of effects with this guy. And I really can't stress enough, a bunch. So we all get a bunch of effects that attach onto the claws. So you get a curved sort of swooshing effect. We get a more angular effect we get another sort of jagged swooshing effect. And then we get like the Berserker Barrage style crosscut effect, which looks great. You put both sets of claws into either spot on top. So each one of these has three holes that you put the claws into them, and then he'll sort of hold onto it. And they're all clear, but they're all really big, and they're incredibly useful. I mean, you really get a lot of expression into this figure just by showcasing that movement and you know, kind of giving him a little bit more oomph and life. But this set also comes with another humongous piece, and it's obviously part of the reason why this set does cost a little bit more. So I'm gonna move Wolverine aside just for a second, and we've got this big monster to talk about. So we get a Sentinel diorama base. So of course it's all carved up, it's all beaten, it has no moving parts or anything like that, but it looks fantastic. There is just a ton of detail pouring out of this. I'm really, really happy with this. I don't have a lot of stuff like this in, in my collection and on my displays, but I'm definitely going to make use of this. Let's see if I've got it on. It's on, it has lights, so you push this button here, and the eye will light up, the chest lights up, and then you've got a little flickering light inside that eye. This eye also is removable. It's obviously already out, but you can pop that in there, and you've got another eye. I find it kind of hard to get it in there just right, but it looks tremendous. I'm really, really happy with this. I mean, I understand that this is definitely a contributing factor to why this thing costs $155, but... You don't get these every day with every figure. So it's kind of a bonus. It makes it a little bit more special. You know, like I said, they're kind of they're kind of going to make this like the ultimate Wolverine. Like you may not need another one after this. 
and you get the whole shebang. You get all the heads, you get all the hands, you get effect parts, you get different eras of, of Logan, you get different eras of suit adornments, and then of course you get this monster sentinel base, which, I mean, it just looks fantastic, and it's, it's not the biggest thing in the world, but it definitely will work to set a scene if you want to put him on top of it, you know, have him standing victorious a little bit. Of course, you know, it might look a little bit better if you use that crazed head sculpt with it, just to show that he has, he's been the one that, you know, just destroyed this thing. But I really like everything that comes in this box. Again, it's, it's a whole bunch of stuff to make a definitive kind of Wolverine. So yeah, overall, this is a fantastic figure. And I think that's kind of been the consensus, right? This is like one of the best Wolverine figures, if not the best, that I've gotten my hands on. And I've, I've for a long time loved a lot of the Hasbro Wolverines, you know, Tiger Stripe, the first appearance, all of them, really, a lot of them really, really do it for me. This one, I think, is definitely going to be kind of a more ultimate style of Wolverine. It has just about every damn thing you need to make Wolverine into what you want. All these different expressive heads, I love what they did. Again, I love what they did with the hands, having two sets of clawed hands. So you've got, like, the open fingers, which is definitely something we don't get with, with Hasbro. You've got the really cool effect pieces. The Sentinel base is, of course, you know, a thing unto itself, and it's fantastic. I love the idea of including that. And then just, again, being able to change up this figure into different eras of Wolverine just by a simple head swap really, really works. I think Mezco absolutely knocked this one out of the park. So that's going to do it for this look at the Mezco 112 Collective Tiger Stripe Wolverine. Let me know what you guys think. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and share, and until next time.